I'm Olivia Davis. And I'm Jeff Davis. We've been uh, attending Highlands Church for over 10 years now. We love Highlands Church because we have always, ever since day one, felt like it's just home. It has a home atmosphere about it. And the, the people that we have met at Highlands aren't just people we see on Sundays. We do life with these people. We have dinner with these people. We have birthday parties. We go on vacations. Like They are our family that we have chosen, not that we were born with. But we would never have met these people or interacted with these people had it not been for Highlands. Giving is very important because we get to give not that we have to give. And, and there's a huge difference in that, in that statement. When you get to give, you know that you're blessed. You know that the Lord is blessing your life. Really, all the things that he blesses you with is, is not really ours. It's ours to be a good steward of. I think that because we're able to, to give, that we're able to reach more people and more souls and more life and let them be a part of our, our home that we call Highlands. To know that I have a job and I'm able to give to my church because I know what they're going to do with that money because I know my church is a good steward with that money. It just lets me know that I'm blessing others because of what I have given. And that's just a, a privilege to me. And I will always pray that prayer that God would just please bless my territory so that I can bless others. And the way for me to do that is by giving to the church. My name is Olivia and I am ready for beyond. My name is Jeff and I am ready for beyond. Good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? Man, oh man, oh man. Man, don't you just love the weather out? I don't know where you guys are watching online, but man, it is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous here in North Georgia. Um, ben, help me out this morning when I'm playing, playing some, some keys before we get going. I, I want to say a big thank you to everybody that's serving today. You know what I love is, is when, I, when I see you interacting and with the, with the folks that are coming in from the, from the parking lot, from the folks that are checking in their kiddos, and, and I was coming down the stairwell and just listening to conversations that are so life-giving. Can I just tell you, you make Highlands amazing, Dream Team. Can we put our hands together for everybody that's serving on the Dream Team? In the parking lot, by the way, great place to be in the parking lot today on that, that, that parking team. But, but those folks that showed up early this morning and got the coffee for all of our caffeinated, highly caffeinated Christians with us today. Man, seriously, I, I, I'm so grateful for the spirit of welcome home that is here because of, because of you. Um, um, you. You heard uh, an amazing story from Jeff and, and Olivia Davis. Great, great family. Been with us for over a decade. And I love their heart of generosity. We, we're in a series called Beyond where we're actually growing in our faith in the area of generosity over the next 24 months as we're going on a journey to, to grow in our faith, to grow in our trust, to, to live a life of sacrifice, to live a life of honor as we, as we return God, to God what is already his. How many know he, he owns it anyway? But as we do that, we're gonna see so many lives change. Yes, we're going to expand. Yes, we're seeing buildings that are built. Yes, we're seeing outreaches expanded. But you know what? It's, at the end of the day, it's not about sticks and bricks. It's all about families. It's all about people. And we, we shared that with you at the Vision uh, Sunday last Sunday as we launched out into this. We shared it with you at the Vision Nights that we didn't start with a building and we showed you pretty pictures. We started with stories. We started with people's names and faces. And so Jeff and Olivia, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for modeling that for, for us. And, and if you're new here at, at Highlands, we wanna say a big 
Welcome home. You are right here on time. Um, it's something I want to bring your attention to for all the parents of the littles. We, we have stuffed animals on that back hallway. And I love that the fact that meet your kid, meet your HK Junior prayer pal. And so, so your prayer pal, those little stuffed animals, that's just a creative way that we're, we're trying to connect the dots. You know, this is not just uh, an initiative for an adults. This is a journey for the family. And we want to make sure that we're discipling that at home. What does that mean? That whenever they have their little, their little uh, uh, stuffed animals and they want to hold that stuffed animals, we're going to say, all right, well, let's pray together. Let's pray for God to bless our, our family and bless our friends and, and, and heal, uh, heal our friends and expand our influence. We're trying to model this in the home. We talked about this last week, that Nehemiah, the spirit of Nehemiah is resting on our church. And what does that mean? That means that we will fight for our families. Come on. When, when Nehemiah, his heart was burdened, his heart was breaking. It was, it was not breaking for real estate. It was not breaking because the wall was down. It was breaking because his people were broken. And, and he saw that, you know what, we can do something about this. And so at, at Highlands, we want you to take your kids on this journey as well and pray for them. And also, you know, um, uh, bring your kids, your students, your teenagers here, middle school and high school, small groups start this afternoon again, and, and, and I'll be with them next week. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. Um, also, I, I don't, I always like to look forward, but I don't know that we can start by thanking God what happened this past Wednesday at first Wednesday service. Man, I don't know if you guys are here. That was powerful, powerful time. It is a, it's, it's a believer's moment, a believer's service. What does that mean? It's those that are committed to growing in their faith. And so we unpacked a little deeper uh, um, uh, text there and we, we taught the Bible, had altar call time, received communion as a church family. And nothing says, I love Jesus more than ice cream sandwiches at the end of the night. Come on now. So we had a great, great time. I want to encourage you to be back with us at the first Wednesday of every month as we grow, as we grow in our faith. Before we pray, I want to uh, call your attention to something that I, I tell you, it's, it was a big win for our church. In a time where the world was not winning, Highlands Church, you and God, we, God won through us as a church. About three years ago, we launched a generosity initiative called Unhindered. And, and I, can I tell you, we, it, it, was, it was the best of times and the worst of times because of this thing called the global pandemic, right? But even through the, the global pandemic, we saw lives change through our generosity. We saw people grow in their blessings. They were blessed in a time of famine because God honored his promises for their life. And, and over, over the last few years, we were able to, as a church body, we were able to set back three quarters of a million dollars. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it was a complete success. And what I mean by that is because of what was accomplished over the last three years, through your family, through my family, through our church, that we were at, we, it positioned us to be able to do what we are doing this year. So I want to say thank you, and I want to put a period and an exclamation point at the end of Unhindered from years ago because of the wisdom of our trustees. We, we, we waited through, um, uh, because of some, some you know, uh, supply things and some some price increases, and because of the wisdom of our trustees and our, and we just said, guys, we need to move at the pace of of unity, and we did, and because we did, we saved hundreds of thousands of dollars because we didn't jump and get and make haste in a time where a lot of people were making some hasty decisions. Your church didn't, and it saved us hundreds of thousands, and we were able to set back a lot of money. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, everybody. So I want to say, this year, get ready. Get ready. Because God will honor our faith and our patience and our hustle. And I want you to hear me. It's not just God and it's not just us. It's God's hand on us. It's God's working through us. And just like Nehemiah, at the end of Nehemiah, the, the Bible says that the world, the people outside of the covenant of God, the world looked at the people of God and they were amazed that 
in their efforts, God helped them. See, it was in their hustle, in their efforts, God's presence was there. And God's presence is on you right now. Are you ready to go beyond this, this week? Me too. Let's pray as we position our hearts to receive from the Lord. Heavenly Father, that's right. We call on the Heavenly Father. Thank you that we can boldly approach your throne this morning. But Lord, yes, the sun's out. Yes, the, it feels like San Diego. It's really nice. But really, we have such high hope in our heart. And it's not because of the weather. It's, it's not just because of, of money that we have been able to set back with your hand. It's not just because we're growing. We're hopeful. We're excited. We're full of faith because where two or three are gathered together, you are here. Your people are happy because your presence is here. Your people are happy not because of our happenstance, because of our happenings, because things are up and to the right. We're happy because we have you in our heart. We're in covenant with you. Thank you. Thank you that you did not leave us alone in our sin, but you sent your rescue plan. You gave your best, Jesus, so we could have your best. God, today, help us to grow in our faith. We want to grow in this area called trust. For those of us today that they, it's difficult right now, Lord, I pray, may hope arise in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. To all of our guests, we want to say a big Welcome home. We're glad you're here. Those that are joining us online, wherever you're joining us from, man, I'm telling you, you are right on time. Get your Bibles out. Ephesians chapter three, verse 20 is where we're gonna start. It's the theme, it's the theme of this series. Uh, the theme verse, the Bible says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond. Everybody say beyond. Beyond all that we could ever ask or think. What does that mean? It means if you can imagine it, if you can think it, God can beat it. Come on according to the power that works on the inside of us. God wants to take us as a church, as a family, take us beyond what we can see with our physical eyes. We talked about that last week. Beyond what we can see with our physical eyes to a life of influence for him. Now, last week we started out with this classic vision uh, statement, this vision verse. We'll go back there, Proverbs 29, 18. The Bible says, where there is no vision, where there is no vision, and, and we said the word vision is like the theme. It is the, it is the, the topic of this, this passage, but we kind of drill down on this, these two words. Be, hey, where there is no vision, the people. Everybody say, the people. The people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. What we talked about last week was this, that, that the people, uh, the people around our life, our lives are are influencing the people around our life. You have a sphere of influence. There are people that are watching you and listening, and your steps influence their steps. Your stops influence their stops. Your words influence and, and can put a, a lid or a ladder on their life. Come on now. And you're not just carrying vision for your life. You need to get beyond yourself. You're carrying vision for people in your sphere of influence. Right? So in other words, how you go and where you go influence the people around you. Now, part two, I want to teach you about this area that I would honestly say that many of us, many of us struggle in from time to time, and we need to grow in this area called trust. Everybody say trust. We have some folks in our church, I'm praying for them, they have electric vehicles, and they're not just electric, they're very smart vehicles. And just last night, I was riding with uh, dear friends of ours, and, um, and, and he was just talking, and he was just talking. I looked over, and uh, how many of you uh, control freak party, a one? Come on, wave at me, come on. His hands were not on the wheel. He said, it's okay, it's okay, it's, a, it's a smart, it's, it's, it's okay, it's got cameras, it's looking at me, I'm like... 
Just could you please, for the love of God, grab the wheel. Come on, grab the wheel. I know your car's smart. I just feel that I'm a little smarter. You know? And Sandra and I, Sandra's a great driver. She's a great driver. <laughs> hey, if you're new, that was my wife saying amen right there. And, 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 but I, 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 I'm, I'm an awful passenger. She's a great driver. I'm just a really bad passenger. Why? Because my brake doesn't, it doesn't work on my side. You know what I'm talking about? Does your brake, you're like, like I suck all the air out of the cab. Okay, 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 okay. But like when we were, tra- when we were, we were, I was teaching my oldest to drive. Um, I just had to pay somebody. I'm like, here, go to a school because she's like, she's in tears. She's like, Dad, you are making me so nervous. I'm like, <laughs> I'm making you nervous. And the answer was yes, because I, I am a control freak when it comes to driving. Okay. Many of us, if we be honest, that resembles our relationship with God. We like worship. We can say amen, but when we get outside of these environments, it's sometimes a little difficult to trust the Father, to trust God. Psalm 33, 4 says this, for the word of the Lord holds true and everything he does is worthy of our trust. (laughs) Okay, but if that's true, then why do we struggle so much? Here's a few reasons I think that, that maybe you, and, and I would say, these are some reasons that I struggle at times, from time to time, is this. Number one, write down, distorted image of God. So I, I was reading something the other day, and the, the, um, it says the psychologist, psychologic, psychologist, psychologist, <laughs> y'all pray. Psychologists believe that relationally speaking, inconsistent fathers produce insecure children. And when I read that, I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? Inconsistent fathers produce insecure children. Problem is, our heavenly father is not inconsistent. So why are we insecure? Here's the problem. When you view God through a distorted lens, you become insecure in your way of living. Here's another reason is this distorted view of ourselves. So it's a distorted image of God, and it's a distorted view of ourself. If you have a distorted view of yourself, you'll have difficulty seeing your need for a God. Not just a God, but a heavenly father, a good father. And, and, and we're gonna talk about that today, that many of us, we have a, a, just a jacked up view of ourselves. Therefore, either we feel like we are too far from God and we're, we're, there's no hope for us, or I think I'm doing pretty good on batting a thousand. I don't really need your God. How about this? Another reason is worry about the future. Worry is, I like this, practical atheism. It's like behaving like there is no God. Now, before I say that with a smile on my face, I'm guilty of that at times. But when I look at that, I go, wait, why am I in knots? If God can take care of the lilies, come on, why am I so wrapped up about what's gonna happen with gas prices? Thank you for that big amen right there. How about this? Here's another reason. Maybe, maybe this is your story. You haven't seen a solid relationship with God modeled well. I grew up in a Jesus-loving, God-honoring home and a very generous home. And, and I'm aware that that's not everyone's story. So maybe you, you, you the, the home you grew up in, that trusting God and leaning on God and, and drawing close to God is, is, is a little bit new for you. Maybe, maybe you saw that model, but what it was was a mayday plan. When all things went, went to hell in a handbasket, that's when mom and dad got right with God. That's when mom and get, dad started to pray. And again, that's, that's when your parent said, all right, this is, this is how we, we need some help right here. And maybe you never saw them walk with God on good days, but may, maybe just only with the bad days. I shared this statistic with you a while back about a Bar- the Barna Group. And this is something that I, I keep going back in the area of generosity. 
And I ask myself through this question through the filter or the lens of, does this sound like a group of people that trust God with their resources? I've shared this with you, I, I know, uh, once or t- probably twice. But look, look at this. The profile of the American Christian. The average Christian in America gives 2% of their resources to the Lord. Less than 5% of attending Christians tithe. The average Christian spends more at Starbucks than they give to the Lord. Matter of fact, the average Starbucks customer spends $1,270 per year. Wow, you guys are thirsty, right? How about this? 54% of people who attend church give nothing. Does this, no condemnation if you're new in this journey of generosity, but this is alarming. This doesn't say I trust the one that gave me the job. I trust the one that gave me the talent. How about this? Another 23% give $1,000 or less annually. So how do we do this? How do we make a shift from God, I trust you with my soul, but I'm a little bit nervous with my stuff. I trust you with my kids. I trust you with my salvation. But you know what? Let me just hold on to this. Do you know that that when when you got saved, um, your wallet got saved too? (laughs) Some of you may say, well, pastor, I'm still praying for my wallet. He ain't quite saved, (laughs) right? But, But really, if, if God could take care of your eternity, he could take care of your stuff. So how do we make this shift? How do we make this shift? Well, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm smiling ear to ear. I'm excited to share with you this today because, guys, I've been in ministry almost growing on 30 years now, almost 30 years that Sandra and I have been doing this, been pastoring. Now, we've been, you know, in this role, pastor for 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 about 16 years now, 16 and a half years, almost 17 this October. And when I get excited about something, I really get excited about something. That God showed me something in the word of God, in the Bible, that I've read this, I can't tell you how many times, but it jumped off the page and I started to connect dots. Come on, it's fresh revelation, this rhema word now. Fresh revelation that God showed me. And man, I just came alive. I thought, I've never seen that before. I'm excited to share with you and pull back the veil on some stuff today. Are you ready? On one hand, there's a story in the Bible about a guy who has trust issues. And he had everything that the world could offer, but he was missing the one thing that he needed. Okay? On the other hand, there's another story in the Bible. And there's a man who did everything he could do to make ends meet but he still fell short until he trusted Jesus. And I don't normally give this much scripture today, but if you'll just hang with me, I think you're gonna build, build your faith today, okay? So, so go ahead and get your, go ahead and get your, your notes out. We, 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 many of you got the, the, the booklets, these, these prayer journals and the, the booklets. Great information. I'm gonna refer to this at the end of our time today so we can take some notes. Come on, note takers or history makers. Come on, get your notes out. And, and, but, but we'll check this out. And we're going to start in Mark chapter 10. Sometimes this is referred to as the rich young ruler. The Bible says, as Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came up running to him and knelt down. Now, I want you to underline things. I want you to make some notes here. He said, good teacher. Remember that. Mark that right there. How did he see Jesus? Good teacher. Hey, rabbi. He's a good teacher. Make a note. Good teacher, what, 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 what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, hey, why do you call me good, Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man, he's a good teacher. Rabbi, teacher, the man replied, I've, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Mark that. Make a note of that. Underline that. Bold that. Circle that. Happy face. Teacher, I'm batting a thousand. I've never made a mistake. I'm, I'm your guy. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal. Right? Make a note of that. 
Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Make a note of that. What he's about to say is not because he's trying to put jet fuel in his, his evangelist plane. He's like, the reason I'm gonna share this with you, sir, is because I love you. This is the, I don't want anything from you. I want something for you. My motive is I love you. He says, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor. So you can't blame Jesus said he just wants his money. He said, give it away. And you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this man's, hey, at, at this, the man's face fell and he went away sad. Mark that, underline that. For he had many possessions. In other words, he was unwilling to let go of the things. The truth is, he didn't just have the things. The things had him. All right? The rich young ruler, Jesus said, uh, Jesus, you're a good teacher. The guy was self-righteous. And lastly, he went away sad because he refused to let go. All right? So there's one story right there. It, take a screenshot in your mind what this guy looks like. He's got everything that the world could offer, yet he, 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 he was missing the one thing that he needed. He, need, he didn't even need to empty his account. He needed Jesus. And watch this. By the way, we never knew the guy's name. The next guy, we learned his name because of his trust. All right, Luke chapter five, verse four. Y'all glad you came to church today. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, hey, Simon, put out into the deep and let down. Everybody say, let down. Let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, <laughs> look, you, 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 we've worked all night. I mean, we work, we've hustled all night and haven't caught anything. But because you said so, because you just said, in other words, I trust you just because you say so, I'm gonna let down the nets. Stop the story right now. For, for those of you who grew up in church, you're familiar with the gospel accounts. And you're familiar with how the story ends and how this massive catch comes into this man's life. But the best part was not the, the big catch. The best part was this small step of obedience to do what Jesus asked, even because it didn't make sense. Even though it didn't make sense. That's the best part of this story. The best part was not the miracle. The best part was, I don't understand it, but simply because you asked me, I will do it. Right Then I submit to you that, that Jesus saw, man, Jesus saw his heart of obedience and he said, I can use this guy. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna have him be part of my 12. Matter of fact, I want him part of my lead team, the three, Peter, James, and John. Okay, write this statement down. That's, I wanna help you this day. Trust and obedience is our part. The outcome is God's part. And I think that so many times we go, man, look at this miracle and look at this and look at this. You know what I look at? Look at the fact that the man did it before he saw it. That he obeyed before he had the miracle. Many of us are waiting on a miracle so we can obey and God's like, no, 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 that's not how it works. You want, you want that wine? You better start filling some pots. You, 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 want, you want a great, you, you want multiplication? Well, you gotta trust God with your lunch. See, we always put the cart before the horse and we get mad at God when it doesn't work, when we don't work his way. Trust in obedience, 100%, that's our part. What about the outcome? Well, they, we're not God. We just have to trust God. All right, let's keep reading. Luke chapter five, verse four through 11. When, when they had done so, they caught such a great large of fit, number of fish that their nets began to break so that they signaled their partners. I don't have time to teach you on this. When God's blessing you, it's never enough for just you. It's more, it, it, it blesses more people. He's like, I'm sorry, I can't even handle all this. I've got to get other people around. He called their other partners in the boat to come and help him. And they came and filled their boats so full that they began to sink. Now, Peter is absolutely so overwhelmed by this miracle that he sees Jesus as more than a rabbi, more than a good teacher. 
He sees him, oh, wait a minute. You are the long-awaited one. You're the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. You're not just a good teacher. You didn't just share some truths in the boat that I loaned you. You are the son of God. You are God made flesh. Now watch what the Bible says. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, look, go away from me. Lord, what did he call him? What did he call him? Wow. He said, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he, all, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. So when James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners, and then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid from now on. You, I love this. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore and he left everything and followed him. Watch this. The nets that he let down, ultimately he laid them down. He laid down. We want to know what the nets represent? Provision. His agenda, his dream, his livelihood, his security. First you let them down, and then you lay them down. And this is the, the revelation that God showed me that I am so excited to share with you today. And I want you to identify, where, who do you identify with? The rich young ruler or do you identify with, with, with Peter? Now put this next slide up on, on the screen. The rich man said, Jesus, you're a good teacher. But watch this, Peter said, Jesus, you are Lord. Je Jesus, you are the one that we've been waiting on. You are the son of God. The rich man saw himself as self-righteous. He's like, I'm good. I'm batting a thousand. I'm doing really good. Just look what Peter saw himself as. I'm a mess and I need a rescue plan. Lord, I'm a sinful man. I, get away from me. I, I, I am so sorry for my doubting. I am so sorry about, Lord, you are God and I, and I am not. And then he says this, the rich man held on to his possessions and he went away sad. And Peter, what did he do? He let down the nets to obey Jesus, and then he laid down his nets to follow Jesus. Let me ask you a quick question. Let's get practical. Where, where are you? Is, is Jesus, is, is, is he a box to check from a Sunday morning, or, or is he the Lord that, that beckons you to do life with him every single day? Is, is, he, is he a good Southern gospel God? that makes me feel good on Sunday morning? Or is he the savior of the world that deserves our, our commitment? Is, 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 is Jesus, um, um, do you see yourself as, you know what, I'm not that bad of a person. I mean, I'm 51% better than I'm 49% bad. Or do you see yourself as, if it were not for the grace and the mercy of God, I, think, I don't even wanna think about where I would be. I'm just telling you, as a pastor, when I, when I come up I, on this campus, I, I, I tell myself, and really I think about this sometimes, if people knew who I was, I don't know that they would come to my church. Because of the grace of God, he gives us a new start. Because of the mercy of God, he does not give us what we deserve. And I'm not self-righteous, but now we can be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That God doesn't look at us like a filthy worm and you're just an old filthy sinner. No, we, we, we are sinners saved by grace. Have you, have you got a haughty spirit about you? Because you know a little thing or two. You memorize some scriptures and, and, and maybe, maybe you've been doing this thing for a while and you're like, you know what, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm good. No, you're not good. And I'm not good. Without God, we're not good. Let me ask you another question. Are you gonna hold on to what you have? Because if you do, this is a guarantee. This is a guarantee. You will walk away sad. You will walk away sad. And, and, but if you lay down, let down your nets and you lay down your nets, then I guarantee you, you'll walk away with a testimony. You'll walk away with a story. So 
I believe the answer. How do we shift in our struggle? How do we shift to trust? All right, all right, here's, here's the heavy revy. You ready? Proverbs 3, 3 and 5. Play a little something, please. Play a little something. We're, we're, we're going to wrap it up real quick. Proverbs 3, 3 through 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge what? Acknowledge him and he will, he will direct your paths. Acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. That word acknowledge is yada. It means to know. In all your ways, to know him. In all your ways, to know God. To have a relationship with God. How do you know God? Well, I'll tell you this. You don't know him from afar. You know him up close. All right? Well, how do I? Great question. How do I get close to God? Trust. Everybody say trust. In the Hebrew, that word trust is batak, batak. It means to cling to, to cling to. In order to cling to God, you have to let go of something else. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge. In all your ways, know him. Acknowledge is not just, I see you. Acknowledge is, I know you and I want to know you even more. But in my doing that, I've got to let go of my security. I need to let go of some things in my life that they become, uh, and I'm so sorry, God, they become a God unto me, an idol. You know what an idol is? An idol is not just a little statue that you worship. An idol is anything that wants to take the precedent of God, to take the place of God, to take the place of, of, of the holy God in your heart. And, and but I was thinking about this this past week. Because Peter, put this up on the, on the screen, because Peter let go of his nets and laid down his plans, he was able to cling to Jesus. <laughs> I used to teach swimming lessons when I was uh, in school as a kid. And, and it was so funny, I would, I would do this. I would put the little one on my, on my back and I would swim in the, in the, in the deep end. And I would teach them, oh, you're going to trust me. Yes, sir, you're going to trust me. Because they want to they they hold on to the side. Or they want to hold on to the bar. Or they want to hold on to mom or dad. And I'm like, it's okay, we're going to do good. And I would, I would tell them, if, you're, if I can't teach your kid to swim in one week, I'll give all your money back. Boy, that's a salesman right there, isn't it? Right? hundred Money back guarantee. And I, and I did. I did. And... and and I would put them on back and I'd swim around the, the, the deep end. After a while, it became fun. At first, it was not fun because they found out real quick, I have, to, I got to hold on to this kid with the mullet talking about me. I got to hold on to this guy swimming around the deep end. And I would just swim in circles like, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yep. Wave at mom. Wave at dad. You're fine. You're, no, no, you can cry all you want. We're going to be here a while. I was, I was the meanest swim instructor you've ever met in your life. God is wanting to take some of you to the deep end. To deepen in your faith. To deepen and solidify some things. But I'm telling you, those trust issues are getting the best of you. You're watching people enjoy their journey in the deep end and you're sitting over there holding on to the side of the pool. And, and, and hey, no condemnation, we've all been there at times. But if you would cling to the God that wants to take you to the deep end, instead of clinging to the security that you, you're, you're clinging to yourself, you don't even realize it. Yeah. Trust in the Lord, cling to the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your being and lean not to your own skill set and, and gifts and talents. In all your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. In all your ways, know him in a deeper way than you've ever done before. Over the next two years, I'm asking you to acknowledge God, to know God. I'm asking you, take a step of faith and trust him and cling on to him. And watch him do amazing things. Miracles in your life. Miracles in your life. Miracles in your life. If you, if you, if you brought your... your, your uh, your, your, your prayer journal. Go ahead and, and, and whip that out real quick. This is, there's a part that says influence of generosity. Influence of generosity. It's on, on page 
It's like this two pages in, influence of generosity. And I wanna bring your attention to something. Your life is influencing someone right now. And I'm telling you right now that my life has been influenced by other people's generosity. We today are sitting in someone's sacrifice. We are here today, and maybe you're joining us online. You're doing that through the sacrifice and the generosity of someone in our church or someone's, many someone's in our church. I'm here today because someone said, I want to put others before myself. I want to be a blessing to more, more than me and my four and no more. What did they do? They, said, they got to the point, they said, I want to cling to God because someone else is not close to God. I'm going to cling to God. I want to go in the deep end so I can help my brothers and sisters get off the steps in the shallow end. Today, as you do your prayer journal this afternoon, or maybe you've done that, or you maybe God's speaking to your heart, make some notes. Where is the area in my life where I keep stumbling in the area of trust? And just go ahead and confess that before God. God, I confess, fill in the blank. This, I have a wrong image of you, distorted. I have a wrong image of myself. I thought that I'd bat a thousand. The truth is, Without you, I'm nothing. Maybe it wasn't modeled today, uh, modeled back in the day. But you know what? I want to start today. Today, I make a commitment to model this before my kids, a life of trust, right? Y'all glad you came to church today? One more verse, Psalm 20, verse seven says this. Some cling to chariots. Some cling to horses. Can I say this? Some cling to 401ks. <laughs> Some cling to the economy. Some cling to status. Some cling to things that, it's just a horse is. But we cling to the name of the Lord our God. I don't want to hold on to something that is temporary. I want to hold on and cling to someone who is eternal. And the question for you today is we, let's, let's unpack this this afternoon around the lunch table, around the dinner table, throughout the week with your family. Is Jesus Lord or is he a good teacher? Do you, do you see yourself through the lens of self-righteous or the lens of I'm just a sinner, but I'm saved by grace? What do you want the rest of your story to look like? Do you want your name to be unnamed? The rich young ruler? Or do you want to say, no, that was a life of legacy? Peter's name is still being shared today. Watch, his story is influencing our story today. And that is my heart for you and your family, that your story is a story of influence. Your life is a life of legacy. That is God's plan for your life. But what's between me and that? Trust. Y'all ready to trust God over the next 24 months? Amen. Here's another thing I want to end with this. And I just, I believe this is prophetic for somebody right here. For those of you who have had a difficult season in your life, let this be an encouraging word for you today. When did the miracle happen? <laughs> At the end of a very frustrating day for a fisherman. And so if you're very frustrated and you're like, I've, you don't know how hard I've been working all night. I've come to the end of myself. Well, I would just ask you to do one more thing, okay? Just say, listen to Jesus, pray and obey because on the other side of that obedience is your breakthrough. If you're exhausted, if you're frustrated, your miracle is one act of obedience away. Let down your nets. Lay down your nets and watch God do some amazing things in your family. And I believe it. I believe it with everything in my heart. I believe that breakthrough is always on the other side of obedience. Amen? At the end of March, we're going to have an opportunity as a church family to obey, to pray and obey. That's why we gave commitment cards out last week. Hey, watch, because we don't like to make knee-jerk reactions. We want to build disciples. We want you to learn how to pray, listen to your heart, listen to the Spirit of God, speak to your heart, and obey in that. And when we do, hey, miracles happen through our families. Amen? Are you glad you came to church today? 
Amen. Let's all stand to our feet before we leave. I want to pray for some folks right now who have gone through a long night of hustle and with nothing to show for it. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm praying for those that are joining us online as well. Maybe that was you when I was saying that story of, man, I've stayed up all night. I've been working. I've been doing everything I know to do at work, at home. And I feel like I'm losing everywhere, at home, at work, in the community. It's just not working. Well, I would encourage you, let down your net. Obey God so you can lay down your life. Don't make Jesus a box to check. View him, view him as Lord, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. View yourself as someone who needs God. <laughs> and watch God do some amazing things. Don't walk away from today sad. Walk away with your name written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're here today, we never like to close out a, a ministry moment without giving people the opportunity to say, you know what, I want a legacy. <laughs> what that starts with me and God. I want, to, I want to have my eternity secure in heaven in Christ Jesus. I want my sins forgiven, and I want my future set in stone. I want to know that, hey, watch, when I get to heaven, there's going to be a big welcome home. Welcome home. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And guess what? Here's the best part. You don't have to wait to heaven to have a relationship with God right now. You can have a real living relationship with God while you're here on earth. The Holy Spirit will fill you, and the Bible says he'll make all things new. And if you'd like that today, I'd love to pray for you. Before we leave and walk out of here and start with a fantastic week, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, count me in on that prayer. I want that. I want my, my eternity secure. I want to know that I know that I know that I have a relationship with God, and I want to walk with God while I'm here alive on this earth. On the count of three, slip your hand up, slip it right back down. I'm not going to drag this out. One. Two, three, anybody in this place? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I don't want to rush this moment. And God's moving. Or I'm going to say this prayer out loud. And I would love for all of us to say this aloud. That in, in true Highlands Church form, as a blessing, as an encouragement to the folks that said, that's me. I, I need to know that I know that I know God. I want my pastor race. I want my life to be brand new. In Jesus, say this, say, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I'm a mess without Jesus. I am sorry for living life my way. Today, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my past. Forgive me of my sinful ways. Today, my life is yours. I commit to know you. Fill me, Holy Spirit. Make all things new. Jesus, you are my Lord. I believe that you died on a cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. Jesus, I'll never be the same after this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, you saw hands that went up. And for that, we are grateful. God, I pray a blessing on us as we, as we continue into this beyond, not just series, but this beyond journey in growing in our faith in trusting you, growing in our faith in knowing that you are the God of miracles. I pray a blessing on us before we leave. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, Highlands Church. And may God give you his peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said, yeah. can we put our hands together for those that made decisions today?